we are now ready to tackle the estimate for the probability frontally. Recall, our basic question was this. If one is given an error tolerance epsilon and a confidence that is desired of 1 minus delta, what size of sample as a function of the allowed error epsilon and as a function of the confidence parameter delta, what size of sample will get us estimates which are within these error parameters with within the desired confidence. When one looks at a mathematical equation like this, well, at some level it is a formidable object. And if one tries to deconstruct it, you say, oh my god, I don't see how to make any progress here. Now, surely we can make progress if we are informed what the error tolerance is. If you are told, say, that epsilon is 3%, and we are told what n is, then we can simply, for the probability on the left, write down the event and then sum up the binomial probabilities and numerically calculate what these probabilities are. Of course, this is already within our purview and we've already seen examples of this. But this is, at a deep level, not very satisfactory. What this doesn't allow us to do is intuit what the relationship between n and these parameters epsilon and delta really is. All we have is a bunch of numerical estimates which gives us a feeling that maybe things are okay but we have no guarantees. To get Forata we actually are going to have to try to at least in principle analytically try to compute an, some, an expression for that probability. A huge step forward was made by the great Russian mathematician Pafnuti Chebyshev. Chebyshev was born in 1821, he lived a long life, died in 1894, and in many ways you can find Chebyshev's fingerprints all over modern mathematics. In many ways you can think of Chebyshev as the father of Russian modern mathematics. Chebyshev made contributions in a plethora of disciplines. He made deep contributions to the theory of numbers, uh, he made a, a fundamental contribution to what is now called the prime number theorem. It was ultimately resolved by Hadamard and de la Vallée Poussin. He made deep contributions to the theory of what is now called orthogonal polynomials. If the student is ever inspired to take a course in Fourier analysis or Fourier theory, she will encounter these wonderful polynomials of Chebyshev. And these, incidentally, were inspired by Chebyshev's interest in James Watt's steam engine. And Chebyshev made deep and fundamental contributions to the theory of chance. His students are among the most noted probabilists of the 20th century. In 1867, he proposed a subtle and seemingly trite-looking inequality for the kind of probability we are concerned with. And this inequality turns out to be the key. Now, to begin the story, let me set it up by going back and reviewing what the basic structure is. So here's a quick review. We are considering poles for definiteness. So there's an underlying population, which is a target. We are going to sample elements independently from the entire population. Remember, sampling is going to be uniformly with respect to the population and the sampling is going to be with replacement. In other words, we're going to have a sequence of Bernoulli trials, let's say a sample of size n. We're going to form an accumulated number of successes. Of course, we call that S sub n and we now know that S sub n has got a binomial distribution with parameters n and p. And now we know what the mass function for S sub n is. The atomic probabilities are given by the binomial probabilities. And we know exactly what the generic shape of the distribution looks like now. But we've done more. Right? In Tableau 10, in part 1, we looked at the idea of a center of mass, a probabilistic center of mass, or what we call the expectation of this distribution. And we found that the expectation has got a very simple form. It is centered at the maximum probability n times p. 
And we also computed a notion of spread in a probabilistic moment of inertia, or in other words, the variance. The expected squared spread of the values of the binomial around its expected value was given by n times p times q. Now the last is all we will need to slalom through Chebyshev's inequality.